Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'll be going over permutations, and in permutations you're given a collection of distinct integers and you're supposed to return all possible permutations. So you gotta keep in mind that this question could be worded a little bit differently. You won't necessarily have a list of integers, it could be a string or something else. So what's important about this problem is you need to know the distinction between a permutation and a combination. So a per in the permutation, order matters, and in a combination, it doesn't. So say, for example, we have 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 1. These two numbers would be the same, or these two um, entries would be the same combination, but they would be two different permutations. So the way we want to approach this problem is by using recursive backtracking and decision spaces. So we essentially want to fix one of these elements, right? So we have a decision space here, and that decision space right now is going to be 1, 2, and 3. So essentially, for our first index, if we were to branch off here, for our first index, we have three choices, and those three choices are one, two, and three. So let's just choose one of those choices, put that here, and then keep in mind, there are going to be also two other branches that have the two fixed in the first location, the first index, and the three fixed in the first index. So let's move on. So the, our decision space is now only two and three because we've already selected one, right? So from here, we can branch it off even more. And then we can select two here. Or we could select three for our second index. And then from here, you only have one other decision to make. So this has to be a three here and the decision space is now empty. And this has to be two here, and the decision space is empty. The reason why this is called recursive backtracking is we start at a path and then we go down it until our decision space is empty, and in which case we backtrack up until the point where our branch diverged. And once we're at that point, we go down here, and then we keep repeating this over and over again until we have every single possible permutation. And what you'll notice is that this algorithm is essentially a depth first search. So a depth first search is when you go all the way down it as opposed to a breadth first search when you go all the way across as if you were reading a book. So I'll get to the code in a second, but I first want to go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity in our case would be n times n factorial. So why is it n times n factorial? Well, the n factorial part comes from the branches here, right? So if you'll notice, for our very first um, decision space, we would have three branches. Um, two of them aren't shown here, but we would have three, and then we'd ha have two, and then we'd have one. So that's where the n factorial comes from. And the n would come from our insertion into the array. So every time we insert an element into an array, that costs O of n time. So that's why the space complex or the time complexity is n times n factorial. So moving on to our space complexity, our space complexity would also be n times n factorial. And that makes sense because we have n factorial answers down here, and then each of those answers are n in length. So that's where we get the n times n factorial. So moving on to the code, we have this result array where we're going to store all our paths, all our permutations, and we have this helper function down here where the recursion is actually going to happen. And we're going to pass in nums, which is the original array, and then we're going to do an empty array here, which is going to be our fixed path. So this is where we're actually going to be generating our path. And then we are going to pass in the results 
array. And that result array, whenever we get down to uh, this point here, we're gonna append to that result, result array. So let's first define our base case. And our base case is when our decision space is empty. So when the decision space is empty, we want to append to the result array and then backtrack upwards. And then we want to also loop through every element in the decision space, right? So that's why we have this for loop here. And this is actually what's spawning the branches. So in our case, in um, for our first iteration, we have um, length of decision space equal to three. So this is gonna spawn three branches here, right? And then what's being passed into the parameters is the decision space. And keep in mind that the decision space is everything except the current element, right? So we want to put the current element as part of our fixed path. So that's why we add it to our fixed path here. And then we also pass in the result array. What you'll notice is that every time you get deeper in a branch, the decision space decreases by a number and the fixed path increases by a number. And that makes sense because we're gonna get to the point where the fixed path is full and the decision space is empty, and in which case you backtrack. So once you get this first permutation, you would backtrack up to this point and then you'd go down this branch and then get this permutation and you would backtrack up and then you you keep repeating that algorithm until you have every single possible permutation. And if you do everything correctly, our results array will eventually be filled up with all of these different per permutations here. And then it will also be our output because we return results here. And thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.